Hello, everybody. And <laughs> welcome to True Detective. Yeah, so <laughs> this is going <laughs> to, this might be a series of, uh, I guess, podcast audio things that we're going to try to do. I don't know if we're going to keep doing them or not. We've been talking about it, but uh, this is basically unsolved mysteries. Uh, Stuff that we don't understand, that we see all the time, that we're just going to sit here and kind of rant about till we either understand it or can't talk about it anymore. Yeah, and these are going to be as reasonable as we can make it without getting too impassioned. We're going to try to look at it. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to try to look at it from multiple angles, but I don't know how doable that's going to be. I'm going to try not to be so passionate. <laughs> So today's episode so, one, it's uh, it's the dead brain defense, the mystery of the dead brain defense. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, um, it's the defense people use for bad movies, or I say bad movies, but we're going to get into that. Maybe they're not. But it's the defense people use when they see something that everyone hates and they say, well, yeah, it was shit. But if I shut my brain off and go along for the ride, it's kind of enjoyable. Anything like that where you hear that excuse of, if I shut my brain off, I don't get that. That is a mystery to me. Is it a mystery to you, David? It is a mystery to me. One that hasn't been solved yet. So Welcome, we're going to try to shut solve up. it. Welcome to Unsolved Mysteries, Episode 1. <laughs> the Dead Brain Defense. The Dead Brain Defense. So, uh, not coincidentally, uh, Ninja Turtles came out today, and... The reviews are, well, they're not split. It's overwhelmingly negative. But uh, in terms of people that I know that have seen it, people in the community that have seen it, uh, it's basically, that movie was shit, I hate it, nothing made sense. Or the other response is, well, it had a lot of problems. The characters didn't make sense. There were way too many special effects. But if you don't really think about it, it's pretty enjoyable. And by the way... I've heard, I've heard those two things. I haven't heard anyone say, it was awesome, flawless, great, yeah. wonderful. So the before we totally get into it, can we just? I mean, like it's it, it's kind of obvious, but obviously this is our opinions, and if you like it, you like it, and that's totally fine. I know yeah. people who love Transformers movies just because we don't like it. That it shouldn't change anything, you know. Right. We just we're like we like to talk about this stuff because we actually enjoy it. Like we actually enjoy like trying to figure out why we don't like whatever it is that we're seeing happen. I don't know. We like it's, trying to figure out why we think the way we think. We like solving mysteries. <laughs> exactly. So we're here to solve this unsolved mystery. Yeah. So uh, the thing that I can't figure out, and, okay, it's like you say that, and to me, to say, like, I just want to shut my brain off and do that. So is that, because it's almost like, it's saying, I can enjoy this as much as the next thing. Yeah, to me, it's that. And it's to me, it's almost like I, it's almost like saying I don't enjoy it, but I don't want to seem negative about it. Right. Because you're literally saying like, yeah, it was bad, but, you know, there's nothing else to do. Like, it, it almost feels like kind of desperate. Like, But, I, but that's the thing. Is, is it desperate or do you just genuinely like... Is it the need to find the positive in a thing? And does that, like, make it, like, because for me, personally, I'm, I'm so negative. So it's yeah. like, whenever I see that stuff, I go, all right, I don't like this. Like, I see all of the flaws with it. And I'm like, right. I just won't see this thing. I don't need to see it. Right. I don't, it, it doesn't matter. If it were called, like, Dave Reposes, like, Amazing Universe, and it blew, I'd be like, Oh man, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> yeah, like so, I would tear myself down as well. So it's like I'm always kind of like super critical of everything, even everything I do for myself. And when I see it out there, I'm like, like I, I guess what happens to me is I look at it as like, how could they do that? Right. Like how could they put it out, label it as like a triple A, you know, made like it's going to be the big thing, whatever. And then think that just because they plug in a franchise to it that people know that right. it's going to be this thing. As, as opposed to, like, for instance, 
the Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. So actually, you brought up Guardians of the Galaxy, which I was hoping you would, because that gets into, I guess, part one of what's going to be kind of a blow by blow of excuses and defenses that we hear all the time. So the first one, I guess, we should talk about and try to understand and figure out is the well, it's about Ninja Turtles. And, you know, obviously it's not supposed to be taken seriously because it's a bunch of Ninja Turtles. It's talking anthropomorphic ninja animals from the 80s. So by default, the movie doesn't have to be good because the subject matter is silly, which I disagree with completely. I've seen that defense a lot for a lot of different movies. But Guardians of the Galaxy came out. It's about a talking tree, a homicidal raccoon, a green lady, a giant muscle man, and a guy called Star-Lord. And it was a fantastic movie with great characters and the action made sense and the plot was followable and it was written intelligently and it's just as stupid or stupider an idea than Ninja Turtles. Yeah, so it's like, why give one the benefit of the doubt? Yeah, making that excuse doesn't work because there's things that are as dumb or dumber that... That are succeeding on a huge scale, just like yeah. in all categories... Because I'm a very firm believer, like we might seem negative when we talk about stuff like this, but me and Dave are both very firm believers that any idea can be done well. Yeah, yeah. There's like no I such there's no such thing as like a bad idea. You can execute any idea well, which is pretty much like the job of a lot of us doing like art. If you do art. Unless right. you're just listening to this because you love Unsolved Mysteries. I mean, you kind of have to believe that anything can be done well if you're going to be a full time freelancer because. In the course of having your career as a freelancer, you're going to be asked to make some really, really weird things cool. Right. Things that you don't even understand, like how they could be cool. Exactly. So you kind of have to have faith that anything can be done in a good way, or at least in a, in a executed in a way that makes it interesting, because that's, that's literally our job. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that defense of the movie holds up. I don't, I don't think that's a valid thing anyone can say is that, well, the subject matter was silly, so the movie doesn't have to be good. Yeah, and I mean, the, I, guess, I guess the thing that, that, would, that is weird to me about like, the statement of that is to not recognize, like, like I was saying, about putting them on the same level. Right. Like, obviously, like, Guardians of the Galaxy is a better movie, just even if you're looking at, like, what is a movie? <laughs> like, fundamentally, what makes a good movie? Right. And it's like, Guardians would be a better movie than that. But is yeah. it... Like, I I don't think that, like, anybody would argue that Ninja Turtles is just as good. I mean, I mean, some people might, because they really love Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know what I mean? It's like, does that... Do you think that that argument is there to keep it there like on the level playing field with everything else or do you think it's just to say like i don't take movies in general very seriously so i don't really care like i'm not i don't care about the movie like i don't go to movies just to like see the greatest movie ever made i go just to like be like whatever this is something i do you know what i mean yeah, because it's almost like people are splitting movies into two categories, where it's movies you take seriously and go to enjoy, and movies you go to just to kill time. Right, like, because I've heard I, so many different things from people who are just like, you know, it's like, you could go to Transformers and just watch it and be like, yeah, that was, it, it had action in it, and I saw it. Yeah, it had action, it had special effects, and the special effects were crazy and whatever. But no one... Literally no one. I even even people that have defended the Transformers movies and stuff like that, you know, whatever. If you like them, you like them. We already said that. But I've never heard anyone, even the people that like the movies, say it had a really good story and compelling characters. Yeah, like I like I just wonder if it's that kind of like categorization of being like, well, it's bad, but yeah, I don't go to movies just to watch The Godfather every time. Right, so, okay, so the second thing we should get into is um, the other comparison that gets made a lot to defend this kind of thing. And again, this isn't really about Ninja Turtles specifically. It's about people using the, I'm going to shut, you know, if you shut your brain off, it's great, or you can get through it excuse. It's really about that. Ninja Turtles just happened to come out, so we talked about it. But uh, the second comparison that gets made all the time that I don't agree with and I don't understand is that it's like junk food. 
um, you know, Doritos aren't good for you, and uh, sure, they're unhealthy, and there's no real nutritional value, but they taste good, so people eat them. And the thing that makes no sense about that comparison and the reason that excuse doesn't hold up for me is that they taste good. It's in, it's in, the, it's in the definition of the excuse itself. Like you just said why that doesn't work because your brain is on when you're eating the junk food and it tastes good to your brain. You have found actual enjoyment in it by processing it and deciding that you like the taste of it. When people see these movies and say, well, if you shut your brain off and sit through it, you know, whatever like if your brain's off you're literally saying i have to go numb to the movie to get through it like where's <laughs> where's where's the like it's not the same thing if you don't like you know if you like unhealthy food cuz it tastes good you like it cuz it tastes good there's a valid reason that your brain has you processed it and decided that yes i like the taste of this thing when people use the i shut my brain off defense for movies they're literally saying i didn't enjoy it I didn't enjoy it so much that I had to turn off the thing that processes it and wait till the credits roll. Yeah. I mean, I, like, that's the thing. Like, I, I feel like that saying, of, like, going and saying that is so normal now that nobody really, like, like, you're, you're breaking it down and having, like, this whole analysis of, like, what it actually means yeah, to I know, say that. I, but I don't think anybody saying, actually says it. Like, I don't think anyone thinks about what they're saying when they say it. I think they just say it. But right. I see it so much about so many things that it's starting to drive me crazy. And that's like, like I, can, I don't know because there are certain things that I almost understand that with like, okay, I'll listen to three, six mafia. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I'm like drawing monsters. Three, six mafia is on. I'm right. painting a troll. I'm listening to juicy J. Right. So, <laughs> I agree on the Juicy J part. So, what I'm saying is that, like, maybe it's more like that kind of thing. Well, to me, it's like, it's like the feeling of being a kid and you're at the arcade and right. somebody, sa and somebody says to you, hey, want to play Time Crisis. Right. I don't care about the plot of Time Crisis. I don't care about the characters. None of that shit means anything. There's nothing there. It's just, it's impulse and reaction. It's a guy stood up and then you shoot. It's just this automatic thing but even that even that has an interaction like you're drawn into that you're immersed into it because that's true you're you're playing a part in that experience with with something like a movie you're sitting there and you yeah, have there's to, no, your there's your no, soul your soul enjoyment lies in the plot <laughs> yeah there's no interaction at right. all it's like it's almost like okay here's here's a good comparison that i'm going to make for some reason this has never dawned on me before i don't know why it's only coming to me for the first time right now <laughs> i like that you're judging it as good and no it's good up with it <laughs> it's good i'm not it this isn't this isn't up to debate this is a good comparison everybody's vain don't worry about it i'm sorry that i just think this is really good it's almost <laughs> like the transformers 3d roller coaster ride and the movie are the same thing but yeah, they yeah. are except one of them has exciting moving seats and action attached the Transformers movies have all the same special effects and crazy shots and all that stuff, but the fun part of the roller coaster ride is that you're moving along with the camera shots and you feel like you're immersed in it. Mm. Once you take that away, there's nothing left. There's no interaction. There's no immersion, and that's what the movie is. It's the roller coaster without the roller coaster. Yeah, that would be actually like, come to think of it, I think that would be an awesome adaptation, like to bring those big summer blockbuster movies that don't like they know that they're not gonna make this like amazing thing that's gonna go down in history as oh that's the greatest movie i ever saw like right. they know that they know they're not making that wouldn't that be cool if it turned into like <laughs> like mom rise i don't know if anybody would know what this is but it's sort of like um it's a place where you go and you're sitting in front of this big screen and the seats move and like stuff happens yeah if that happened i might see that movie if I went to Transformers 4 and Optimus jumped on the back of Grimlock and then the camera panned around like you were riding Grimlock and the seats moved up and down and you felt air shoot out of the walls every time he yelled like there was hot breath and like when Optimus jumped in the water, water splashed down from the ceiling like these rides we're talking about. Yeah, like I would stuff. Go see the, I'd go see the movie because that's – you're experiencing it. The 3D is secondary to the experience. It enhances it. Yeah, they should make more interactive movie theaters. I would be – down for and, that 
these movies literally feel like one of those 3D animated screen rides, right. but without the ride. That's what they feel like to me. I don't, like, I'm just realizing that now. It's like if anyone's been to Universal Studios and gone on, like, the Star Wars ride where you all sit in a theater and then it's like you're in the Millennium Falcon and you're flying through the asteroids and stuff and, like, that asteroid scene in and of itself would never be in one of those movies because it's way too long, not that much happens, it's just special effects for special effects' sake. But when you put everybody in a room and the seats move and there's crazy loud, like, boom, every time something collides and things are shaking and lights are blinking, like, that's a sensory interactive experience. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that fills that blank of, like, what, uh, what the whole, uh, video game argument would be. Right. Like you can have that if you have the extra stuff. So it's like, I just don't, I just don't get it. It's like, it's almost, it's almost like people have to like stuff. Like things can, it's okay for things to be bad. Like you can say, you know, I went and saw that movie and it was bad. Like you can, even if it's something you love, like I love, I love the Ninja Turtles. They're my absolute favorite thing growing up. Dave, Dave obviously loves them. He did the whole series of them. Like, we both love this IP. We cherish it. It's great. So it seems like there's two kinds of people that go to these specific IP movies. It's the fans that go there, and no matter what, they have to like it because they're so attached to the IP. And then there's the no matter what they do, it's going to be bad because I like the IP too much. It's like two extremes of that. Yeah, one of them's a diehard fan who takes in. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like it doesn't matter they, what they do. It's not going to be my vision of it because I like it too yeah. much. yeah. And, and like, I, think, I, I think both of those are dumb. I mean, but I think that, like, if, like, I would eat all of my words about this if that movie turned out to be amazing. Right. If that movie was amazing, and, like, even if I don't like the way they look or whatever else, I would, yeah, I would say, you know, fuck me, that was good. I'm, well, I'm an idiot thing, for like, judging it. I went and saw Days of Future Past, even though X3 right. and all the Wolverine movies were fucking horrible. Like, absolutely horrible. Like, none of it felt like X-Men. I really hated X3. I hated the Wolverine standalone stuff. I went and saw it because people said it was good, and I watched it, and then I walked away from it, and I went, that was actually a good movie. Like, yeah, I liked was, it. Like, really I'm the good. first person to admit when something I think is going to suck and I say is going to suck is good. I'll admit that right off the bat. I was totally wrong about that movie. It completely surprised me, but I was totally wrong. I thought I honestly thought the Avengers they wouldn't be able to like. I mean, because it's like before that, I was like, I, I never watched like Buffy the Vampire Slayer or any of the stuff that Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon did. Because yeah. it's like I had no idea if he was like good or anything, and that's well, just plus, me being totally naive to it. I have no idea about it. Yeah, and plus it was like Iron Man was really good, but we didn't really like the Thor movie, and Captain America was kind of flat. Yeah, like, yeah, just comparatively, like, yeah, I don't know. If, but it's totally open, you know, like, that movie was amazing, obviously. And, like, it, had the, it, Hulk, really it cool. had the Hulk in it, and both Hulk movies were awful. Yeah. So we were just like, eh, The Avengers is probably going to suck. Like, I remember we used to talk about it before it came out. Like, this movie is probably going to be really bad. And then it was amazing. Yeah, because it's like, how can you do that? But yeah. um then they did it. But, yeah, I mean, like, it's totally, that's the thing about it. Like, what we're saying is, like, like, not that everybody thought that that was a universally accepted as a bad idea. Of course, people were super excited. I was still excited about it. But right. it's like, it's one of those things of saying, this looks like it would be really hard to do, so how are they going to pull that off? And then when they do pull it off, it's great. And that's the thing with, like, taking an idea like that. You never really know. You right. could really strike gold with it. It could be really great. <coughs> but, so, okay. yeah, it's like taking, but yeah, like, coming back to it, like, yeah, I don't know. It's like there are movies that I think are really bad that I love. Right. Like I love uh, I was talking about this a minute ago, the movie Deadly Prey. Great, great movie. <laughs> I like Cyborg with Van Damme. Right. Uh, he gets crucified in that movie. Van and Damme the, gets crucified in a movie. Awesome, awesome things happen in these movies and they're kind of hammy and they're kind of be and there's some humor because of that. But they play it totally straight, and it's totally confident. And the people making the movie obviously thought they were making the best movie of all time. And when you watch it, that's where the enjoyment comes from. So in that same light, if somebody saw Ninja Turtles, and then they came to me, and they were like, 
man, that movie, they really thought they were doing a great movie, but all this terrible shit, it's hilarious. You should watch it. Like, I might watch it for that reason. But people are like, it's awesome. It's so good. Why but, is it good? It's but, got uh, Raphael. No, but that's the other side of it, is that the, that argument comes before the movie. Right. Um, it's not like you go to see it. I mean, I, I don't think... I don't think anybody would... I mean, like, I'm sure there are people who enjoy it. There's tons of kids who enjoy it. I loved tons of movies that weren't obviously, like, critically whatever when I was a kid because right. who cares? Who, who really cares? No, the critical... It doesn't matter. I don't care what score a movie got. It just... Yeah. Is it enjoyable or not? Yeah, so it's like... It's weird because it's before the movie comes out that you're, like... Like, when I see it, I you know, you go, like, oh, again, with the whole... You know, like, everything's adult, everything's like, I even hate what I did with that stupid stuff. It's like, I like I, I knew that they were going to do that, like, that whole right. real approach. And, you know, they're, they're not, you remember when we used to be called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Remember Dark and it, serious. Cowabunga. Yeah. It's like, stuff like that, I'm just, ugh. And I see yeah. it and I go like, oh, this, is, this looks like it's going to be bad. But then I can't tell if that excuse... Or that saying is there just to like preempt people who won't like it, or like do they have, or is it to be on the other side just to have there be a counterweight to the people who don't like it? Is it is it such well, a is it such a turn off to people when everybody's so negative about when something comes out that it's almost like you know what fuck everybody this doesn't look that bad and that's why I say this stuff. Well, I think it's a confidence issue because like. You know, there's been movies where the trailers come out and people go, ah, I don't know about that one. And then the movie comes out and it's really good because the studio had the confidence to just let it come out and be good. Yeah. And then there's movies like Ninja Turtles where this actually happened. And I remember when it happened because it blew my mind they actually did it. They announced back when the movie got optioned and scripted that the Ninja Turtles were going to be aliens and that the source of the goo was going to be aliens. And all the fans were like, fuck this, this is the worst thing ever, how could they do that, it's horrible, blew up all over the internet, went viral, everybody nerded out about it, hated it. So then they added a line to the script of the movie, uh, hold on a where somebody says, are they aliens, and Megan Fox looks at the camera and says, no, that would hey, be stupid. I'm going to vanish for a second. Do it. Somebody's at my door. Do it. So, the reason I say that's a confidence issue is because... If they wrote the script and they loved the idea of them being aliens and they thought it worked for this universe they were making, they'd have the confidence to just follow through with that and go with whatever vision they had. But the fact of the matter is, and I don't, I don't think this is debatable really when you think about it, they don't have confidence in it because they don't care. The people writing the script don't care about this. They don't care about the characters. They don't really have an attachment to it. They're just plugging things in based on what Hasbro is telling them to do. You know, Michael Bay is producing it. Uh, so when they put that out there and everybody hated it, they automatically went, well, let's just put a line in there making fun of it. And, uh, yeah, that, that was a terrible idea. Like, it's almost like art by committee where they say, what if it was this? And everybody goes, it should be this. And so then they change it and... You know, there's no like, there's no confidence there. It's just this wishy-washy give and take of what we want to do, what you don't want us to do, and then we end up in some tepid sort of middle ground. Hey, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's not really my point though. I'm saying yeah. like to the actual people who say the that line you're saying, like, do you think that a lot of the reason that, like, like I was saying, like people will go to see the movie. You know, like, I don't think a lot of people would argue that, like we were saying, Guardians of the Galaxy is just a well-made movie compared to Ninja Turtles, right? Right. So it's like, I don't think a lot of people would fight that and be like, well, no way. But, uh, like, I, I almost feel that when people say that, it isn't so much to say, like, you know what, I love every movie I go and see. Right. It's to say fuck you to everybody who has, like, a negative opinion. Like, just, like, people like us. Like, right. if we don't like it, then, like, fuck us for saying that because, you know what, just be okay with stuff. Well, now like, we're it's this, not that this, bad. You know what I mean? This, yeah, we're in this weird atmosphere now, though, where honest opinions, if you just say something isn't as good as something else, you're negative. You get that word assigned to you, and 
you know, negative automatically translates as bad. You know, you're bad and wrong and mean because of negative opinion. But it's like if a movie's honestly bad and someone says it's bad, they're not being – that's not negativity. That's honesty. I Negati- think I, negativity is an overarching thing where but, even if something's good, you hate it. But I think that the, the point of what people are saying is that, like, you're saying that when the trailer comes out. As yeah, opposed I mean, to saying it later down the line. It's like, but what I'm can, saying... Trailers can be bad, though. That's the thing. The trailer yeah, on its own can be bad. For sure. But I think that, like, the point of it is that if you haven't seen the movie, why are you saying this? Right. But then it's... Is that more of, like, a hesitation on the other person's part to say, like, you know what, like, I'm not, whatever. Like, sure, the, like, if they see the trailer and they go, I like the way they look, I like the blah, blah, blah. Is that just to reserve judgment? Is that all that is? So, like, to people who jump on it, is that where just the negativity comes in, where you're, like, you haven't seen it? So is it, what I'm saying is that, like, is it okay after the fact, or is it never okay? to be that person. I guess the only way it would be okay to be that person is to say, well, I really hope this movie is good, but that particular trailer didn't sell it for me. Right. Okay. Like, if you just say, fuck this, it's all shit, like, then yeah, you're being an idiot. But if you're like, well, because like when the Avengers trailer came out, I remember me and you were talking about this, it had a Nine Inch Nails song in it, you know, Captain America looks at the Hulk and he goes, you better smash, and we were like, ah... I'm not feeling good about this movie. Like, that trailer did not work for us. And then we saw the film and we loved it. Right. But the trailer still didn't work for us. We were like, this is trying way too hard to be cool. And it just didn't feel right. And then the movie was great. Forgot about the Nine Inch Nails song. Yeah, exactly. They were like, what song do we have about being in something together? I'm going to grab that Nine Inch Nails song, throw it on whatever. Like... We got this song that has words in it that apply to the script, so I'll toss it in. And uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't work at all for us. It might have worked for other people, but again, this is just our opinion. But I still didn't think it looked like it wasn't the worst thing. No, like that's the thing about it is that like I I wouldn't have said that's as bad as like the Transformers but, trailer or something like that. Yeah, but in terms of like the confidence thing I was talking about a few minutes ago, like. I think the worst thing you can do in a trailer is pander to people, especially yeah. when the people you're pandering to are the people that eviscerated you for an earlier trailer. Right. So when Megan Fox turns towards the camera and says, them being aliens would be stupid, and mm-hmm. stares at the camera when she says it, and it's addressing the people out there that didn't like the first draft of the script, not only are you breaking that wall, you're admitting to everybody we have no confidence in what we're doing and we don't care about the script. Like We, we changed it for you because obviously it wasn't that important to us. Will you see the movie now? Well, hopefully, like, in my positive outlook on it, hopefully that was never in the script and that was just some rumor. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but even so, they added that line about them being aliens. Right, yeah. I, so, it, I mean, even if it wasn't in the script, they acknowledged the backlash with an actual line in the movie, which is literally pandering. I'm just, it's just to, I'm just trying to be the devil's lawyer. That's well, fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I guess I guess the bigger the bigger thing to okay, so here's here's the next thing we should talk about. Yeah. Okay, so we've we've defined that we've talked about the Avengers was a really good movie for very good definable reasons. When you leave the theater, you can say the character you, interactions were great. Are you talking about you just said the Avengers? Did you mean Guardians? No, the Avengers. Okay. When you leave, you can say, and Guardians. I was going to bring up Guardians next, but think about Avengers and Guardians at the same time for this. When you leave the theater, you can say, the story made sense. The characters were really good. The plot made sense. The characters changed in a believable way. The action was done in a way that I could follow, and it wasn't over the top. It made sense for the situations in the script. It was very satisfying. And those movies are full of special effects and high-budget stuff. So... If we've established that movies can have tons of special effects and be a spectacle and still be well-written, good films, then we have to hold every movie with high-budget special effects to that standard, don't we? We can't make a double standard for Ninja Turtles and Transformers. If you can do do it well, then everybody should do it well, right? Yeah, I think it's uh, maybe like a lot of times it comes back to like, 
a lowering standard of like saying, well, not everything can be that. Of saying yeah. like you couldn't possibly go back and get a script done right, and and I mean it's like and then you can't really you don't know what happens. Like maybe it was cool. Like maybe the Ninja Turtles movie was great once upon right. a time. Like maybe the first draft was like amazing. Like we have yeah. no idea. So that's always a possibility that it's just like something down the line that people who have good intentions that have no control over end up getting like steamrolled and everything changes. Right. So it's like you can't really like predict that, but because the thing you had to keep in mind is that Kevin Eastman's involved. He probably has a say in the script. Michael Bay's producing. He has a say in the script. But he doesn't even own it, though. I know, but Hasbro's involved and they own it, and they have a say in the script. Nickelodeon is involved. They have a say in the script, and then there's the writers. Oh, and I think there were two main writers. I think so. That's six people that get to weigh in on a script. Just so nobody corrects us, I'm pretty sure Nickelodeon owns Ninja Turtles. It's not Hasbro? I don't think so. I don't know. That's not okay. that important. Just whoever is involved and has well, financial way, control over whatever they have say in how the property four, is used. Yeah, there's four or five different people that get to weigh in on a script in a, in a case like this. And so, then it's like all of the revisions and... Yeah, so then it's it's art by committee and things get changed and maybe, you know, Michael Bay really wanted the snowboarding scene and that's the only reason it's in there. Like, those things happen. Like, and it, I don't know, it's it's weird, but what I'm trying to get at is, like, if movies, if movies can have tons of special effects and be spectacle films and also be very satisfying as a movie with good writing and good characters, then why do we have to give movies like Ninja Turtles and Transformers a pass? Why do people feel like they have to give it a pass when there's obviously a good way to do it that they didn't do? I don't know. Because anyone can leave a movie and go, like nobody's saying Guardians of the Galaxy was bad for the most part. It's got like 95% approval. Everybody I know who saw it loved the characters. Plot made sense. Like if you see that, and then go see Ninja Turtles, and then you walk into Ninja Turtles and go, it was good, but I don't really know why it was good. It was good because I'm a fan of Ninja Turtles and uh, action. Like, if one's good, then the other can't be, you know what I mean? Like, it can't be good. Like, it's it's not honest to say that those things are equal. Yeah. No, uh, I know. Like, that's the weird thing for me is the, like, that's, that's what I was trying to get at, is, like, I was... I was trying to figure out if the mystery here for me, yeah, is getting back to unsolved mysteries, is whether or not the intent of saying that is an actual like personal opinion of like those things, or if it's more to say, shut the fuck up, everybody else, wait right. for this thing, right? Because I don't really think anybody's like, I don't think anybody's like stupid. Like they're just like. And I don't think you have to be stupid to enjoy things, of course. But I'm saying that, like, no, yeah. I don't think people are just saying, like, hey, everything's great all the time, constantly. Like, I think it's more of a, you know, come on, are you serious? Shut the fuck up. I think one thing that might be happening, and I don't know how how far wide this, this might stretch, but I think one thing that's happening more and more is that because of the trailers and all the pre-hype and all the divisive opinions about that looks really good or that looks shit, people decide if they like a movie or not before they even see it. And then after they see it, they can't change their opinion because they've said ridiculous things on the internet. Like, fuck you, man. The turtles are great. Eat shit. And then you see the movie and the movie's horrible. You can't then go to that guy and be like, oh, I'm really sorry I told you to eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was horrible. Like you're locking yourself in this extreme box of opinion before you've even seen the thing you have an opinion about. And then if it's bad, no one wants to admit they're wrong. That's the thing. And lots of people won't admit they're wrong. Some people will, but lots of people won't. So it's like if you're hyped for a movie and you defend it like crazy online and you go into like all the vitriol and you know tell everybody to fuck off and it's going to be the greatest thing ever and fuck the haters. And then you see it and it's trash. You're not going to then go online and be like, ooh. Okay. Yeah. So here's the other thing. And this is a whole other mystery. Is it that we just care too much 
about this stuff, so we get so bothered by it that it almost like, okay, so if you didn't put yourself in like my shoes, for instance, like I love movies. I love yeah. them so much that like it drives me nuts when something like, not that I could do it better. I don't mean that. Is that like you have a vision of what something would be if it were perfect. Right. You go, textbook, perfect, what is that? And then you kind of like picture it in your head and you're like, okay, it could be this. It could be this. And right. then it's just like you going there and your expectation of like what this could potentially be falls upon the things that you love. And then when they're not those things, you're like, oh, it could have been great. Right. It's because you think about it a lot and that's almost the problem is like maybe it's that you're constantly imposing your own like vision of this thing that you get lost in it and then it's like your idea of what movies could be or something is this like weird other level thing where you're like everything should be this one maybe that's only like flash in the pan who the fuck knows everything could fail it's almost like I have a very clear vision of who the character the Shredder should have been in the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Because of how I grew up with it and how I interpreted the stories. And if they don't get that right based on what I think it should be automatically, it's like a, no, they fucked it up. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I'm of, I'm of the opinion just anyway about anything that if you're going to change a lot of something, uh-huh. that means that you you don't necessarily want to do that thing. And I understand that, like, you're getting paid to reinvent a franchise and it's not really up to you you're not like you know nobody's it's like even the guardians of the galaxy happened it's yeah. such a no-name thing that everybody thought it would fail and then it doesn't fail hopefully that leads to more risks i don't think it will i think it'll lead um, to more I think space it will, movies i think it'll lead for more risk for marvel right but more space movies for everybody else yeah, because now Marvel has the okay to do whatever the fuck they want with Omega Flight, Doctor Strange, like who the hell knows what obscure teams they're going to pull out. Right, so, I don't know. I mean, like, to me, I think it's almost this problem of, I think that, like, when somebody says those things, it's them, they're not, like, they may not be, like, they may not give a shit about that stuff as much as you do, where you're, where you're actually bothered by it, and they're like, well, what the fuck, it's just a movie. Right. You know, like, because it's like to me, and we were talking about this earlier. It's like when I see a GTA Five stunt video online, I'm like, oh, you mean when you were sitting on your fucking couch right. playing a video and game, and you call that stunts? And like other the, people, there are real daredevils. Impressed. Yeah, yeah, and then there are other people who are invested in the game, who play it all the time, who are like, that was crazy. I know what it is to do that, and that's hard to do, even if it's a game, because I love the game. Right. Maybe it's the same idea. Is it like those people who say, I just shut my brain off and I go into these things. They're just like, who the fuck cares? It's just a movie. That's a good point. Where we come at it like, this is everything. Right. <laughs> Ninja Turtles could be everything. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. <clears throat> Here's another possible solution to this unsolved mystery. Uh, let me know how you feel about this. Is it possible that people viewing movies are grading their movie-going experience on a curve the same way that teachers will grade things on a curve to make the overall class average seem higher? What I mean by that is if every single student in the class gets a D and one person gets a B, they scale it up so the B becomes an A plus and all the Ds become C pluses. They take the highest grade they bump it to the highest possible, and then relative to that, they bump everything else up relative to that. So everything moves up on an upswing. They do it in schools all the time. So the point I'm getting at with this is that if tons of movies are coming out that no one's really enjoying that aren't very good, and yes, there's a few exemplary movies that come out now and again, do all the mediocre ones get bumped up to good status because the competition is so shit? Yes. Okay. I, th- I think that that's just normal, though. I think that's, I mean, what do they call that? The, a new normal? I mean, it, it's like, uh, if you were to compare it to something that's just a universal thing, it's like, it used to be ridiculous to talk on your phone in front of somebody. And now, okay. that's, now that's everywhere, right? So now that's no longer rude. <laughs> that's just how you are. 
Right. And it's like, you know, like if I were, I heard a comedian say this, but it's totally true. It's like if I were to walk up in front of you and I, hey, Dan, what's up? And then I lifted up a magazine in front of your face and started reading it. <laughs> it's like, that, that's still rude, but it's the same fucking thing as the phone. Right. And it's like, I think it's more that kind of thing of like, well, this is the new good. The new good is this not that great thing. So are we, are we then, okay, so in this example, are we then seen as negative assholes because we don't acknowledge the curve things that are average are average and things that are bad are bad no matter what to us yeah so is that what defines the negativity i think so i think that it's we just won't, like we when you scale everything i i mean like i wouldn't elevate anybody to saying like oh they know yeah <laughs> they, they know nobody else knows it's like i think that every single one of their everybody's opinion makes sense it just depends on, like, just how you see things, how you grew up with things, whatever. You right. know, like, I don't like Ben 10 doesn't mean it's not amazing. Right. Like, I've heard that the Avatar show is amazing. I never watched it, really. I saw a couple episodes. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing that gets back to the definition problem, because, okay, so sticking with that example, you don't like Ben 10. Tons of people do like Ben 10, but the people that like Ben 10 have very specific actual reasons they like it. Yeah. They like it because of, you know, the character, what he can turn into, all that. You know, they find they can define why they like it. When people leave these movies and you ask them why they liked it or to defend why it was a good movie, they can't give you an actual answer. They just say, well, the action or uh, I like Ninja Turtles. Like, yeah. I, haven't heard a, I haven't heard an actual reason why the movie was good yet from anybody. And that's the same thing with Transformers. It's like, saw so Transformers, it was great. Why was it great? Uh, the uh, dinosaurs. I like yeah. dinosaurs. Like, sure, I mean, if you're going there just to look at the designs and stuff, yeah, but if that one thing in the movie, this is all I'm getting at with this, is if you went and saw it and all you liked was the designs of the Transformers, does that mean the movie is great? Is that enough to make it great? Because great is a word. Like, all these words have actual definitions, and I feel like the definitions don't mean anything anymore. Like, superb means superb. You know what I mean? Like, it's the best of the best. Right. Average means it's average. Bad means it's bad. Like, if everything's great, then nothing is great. You know what I mean? Like, things should be special. Your favorite movie should be great. Everything else should be not as good as that great thing. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a problem to put everything on the same level and say, like, it's totally okay. Yeah, because then everything loses its meaning, and then nothing means anything anymore when you're talking about anything relative to anything else. It's like, if you have to say everything's great for whatever reason, then nothing has any value anymore. Something should be the best. Something should be good. Something should be mediocre. And mediocre is still okay. That's the thing. Mediocre doesn't mean bad. For some reason, we're in this you know thing now where saying something was mediocre automatically means you hated it and it was bad and you're shitting on it. Mm -hmm. Mediocre just means it was average, and there's plenty of good things that are average. You know what I mean? Like it should be okay to say that. Like you know, relative to this movie that I love, this was mediocre. Yeah. Like, I I really really love Kill Bill. Okay, that's like my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. I love it. I saw Inglorious Bastards, and I thought it was mediocre compared to Kill Bill. I still like that movie a lot. I still enjoy watching it. But compared to Kill Bill, I just don't think it's as good. I saw Django, and I thought it was as good or better. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there, yeah. I like all of them. I enjoy all of them, but only one of them is great. You know, that's the thing. There is a hierarchy, even though I enjoy those things. One of them is clearly better than the others. Okay, so how about this? What if it's more about, like, what you actually consume? Okay. Maybe you don't... You, like, okay, uh, if somebody reads a ton of books... Yeah. Like, primarily they read books. That's how they get stories. And then they go and they see a movie. That movie lacks a lot of content that would be there in a book, the emotional investment, a lot. It's like, you, you think, if you've never read a book... You think a movie is emotionally like you know like you're in it, but when you read okay, a book so, and you live yeah. with characters and you get to absorb a whole story, it's like 
you're actually there and that's the that's like truly being in a world it's like that so this is like this is like the stephen king argument yeah why are his books amazing and all the movie adaptations terrible yeah it's like well i wouldn't say they're all amazing but a couple of them well really really good the the good (laughs) ones are the good ones are really good the bad ones are really bad Okay, but so like, it's like even as good books, you know, there's never been like an actual good movie made out of and, any of them. And to just make a point of this, to everybody uh, might be listening. It's like we're saying that because a lot of his books have been turned into movies. Oh yeah, tons of them, tons of them. He's in terms of authors, he's I think he's had more movie adaptations than any other author in history. So uh, yeah, it's like. Yeah, I think there's that kind of thing where it's like if all you ever did, like, let's just go with like a guy. If you're like a guy guy and you only watch action movies, you only you can't appreciate any other kind of thing. There are people like that. There are people who go, uh, is it Lethal Weapon? <laughs> right. I'm not. I'm not going. <laughs> like, right. Like that happens. So, you know, maybe it's something like that of like I've only consumed these kind this kind of entertainment so i don't this, want to step outside my box yeah but this is this is my definition of good this is my right. good my good is that that's the that's the epitome of a movie is feeling like that but that being said i like it's the not really my, I, like, I like the title my good yeah it's not i like that it's not fair to lump lethal weapon like that because lethal weapons i like lethal weapon a lot it's yeah. it's, it's like it's not like a terrible movie but no. i'm just saying like if you watch like I'll give a better example. The movie The Giver 2. I watched that all the time when I was a kid. I watch right. it now. I'm like, oh my god, that's fucking awful. But when I was a kid, that was my good. Mm-hmm. My benchmark for good was designs in a movie. And maybe, like, if I hadn't been so obsessed with movies as a kid, maybe I wouldn't even give a shit now. Maybe if I, like, didn't constantly, like, watch movies all the time and, like, that's a good think point. about it. Maybe I wouldn't give a shit still. Maybe I'd just be like, the designs in this movie are fucking cool. Like, but you get so into, like, I think if, like, for instance, people who become food critics, it's like, you eat food all the time, and then eventually you you get so picky about what you eat because you do it all the fucking time, that it's like you only eat at five-star restaurants and you think that everything else is shit if it's not a five-star restaurant. Right, that's a really good point. That's a really good point because food, yeah, the food critic analogy works really well because you've eaten the best of the best so frequently that everything else is going to curve down. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah, I think like maybe that's why like you create these like tiers of like judgment on like other people for like, how can you say that's that thing when you, it's obviously not, well, maybe that's. To you, that's your personal obvious. That's the thing that you decided was blah, blah, blah. And not everybody's going to feel like that, and that's fucking fine. But regardless, yes, it's a matter of, you know, perspective, personal upbringing, personal uh, taste, what you liked as a kid, the things you're into, the things you get inspiration from. All that stuff goes into the pot and comes out with whatever answer your answer is going to be. But regardless of that, Using the phrase, it's good if you turn your brain off, Yeah, does not apply. That's true. I think it does <laughs> not. Yeah, it does not apply. Going back to the unsolved mystery itself, why do people think this is a good excuse? Right. None yeah, because I, yeah is, because I didn't you shut can, my yeah, brain you, off. You, you, you can say why you liked The Giver. You can admit it's not that great of a movie and doesn't hold up, but you you can define why you liked it. You can define the parts of your brain that it activated and excited as a kid. And like, you know, there's definitive reasons the same way the junk food argument from the beginning, you know, Doritos, if you like the taste of them, you like the taste of them. There you go. That's the reason. But these people that say, well, you know, if you turn your brain off and sit through it, it's like that, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I still don't understand why that's a defense. Well, maybe it's just a, poor like and may, maybe it's not the thing they're trying to say it's just the thing that's available to say yeah because people use it a lot so it just becomes like a common thing but just becomes a thing like the the actual like i don't know the the real like meaning behind it is kind of gone kind of like how you don't think about words anymore 
Like right. awesome, awesome isn't awesome anymore. <laughs> it's just the word is just awesome, and it means good. Right, right. Everything's been, all of the positive words have been pushed into awesome category, and all the bad ones have been pushed into shit category. And there's no middle ground anymore. There's no, there's no gray areas where things can be kind of good for certain reasons. Things are good or bad. Yeah, I think it's a, like it's a good movie. It's a bad movie. Like, I feel like that's where we're at now. But maybe where, that's only the perception. The perception is that, like, that's what it is. But really, that's the only thing you ever hear because who wants to talk about a mediocre movie? Right. You only ever say, oh, that was shit. Because you're compelled to say that was shit. If something's like, all right. Like, okay, The Conjuring. I saw that movie. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't shit. It was pretty good. But... Yeah whatever i'm not gonna talk about it i'm not gonna like i have nothing bad to say about it besides like how come when everybody dies they put on eyeshadow right why do all ghosts want to spook me like why do ghosts put on ghost outfits after they're dead like it doesn't right. feel realistic to me and it takes me out of it that's right. my critique <laughs> but it's like it's not enough for me to like say get, shit. get like really mad and be like ah oh, how did they do this la 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 yeah. So for me, okay, so going along with the Conjuring thing, for me it's like the, uh, you know, what do they call them? The movie we watched and we were like doing like a study of it basically when you were staying at my place, you know what I mean? Paranormal Activity. Paranormal, yeah, right. Paranormal Activity. The porn acting in the beginning. Yeah, it's like it's not even, it's like I don't even know why they made it because nothing happens and then when the time signature on the bottom of the screen slows down, because they speed up super fast at night when people are sleeping, and then it slows down. And once it slows down, you know something's about to happen, or they wouldn't have slowed it down. So it, isn't the scare supposed to come from the unexpected creepy thing? And it, it's almost like it's like being on a tram ride at Disneyland, and then the tram stops, and then the dummies come out, and they go, we are from Deutschland. And like, you know, it's, <laughs> like, it's like waiting for a series of things. And yeah. that means it's bad, right? Like, it's bad but people if, love those people love those movies but that's right. by definition that's not scary but okay horror movies are actually a great great thing to talk about with this that's actually i think that's the red letter media thing it feels like one of those rides actually i just want to say that i just used that and then i realized that that was actually their critique of it but okay so I think horror movies are kind of perfect for that because nobody goes to a horror movie thinking, I can't wait for this to great movie. movie. Yeah, no, I no, can't. no. I think, I think they go like, I, I can't. Like, they're not going, going to it because it's 12 years a slave. Right. They're going into it because it's, you know, whatever, a 12-year-old ghost. Right. It's like, it's not there to be that. So maybe that's what that category is for action movies. And maybe it's totally okay. You know what I mean? Because it's like people people go to the action movie because they just want to see action. And maybe that's good enough. Like, that's all it is. And maybe that's but, okay, where the so thing then, is. There. Then my question, the thing that I don't get, the unsolved mystery for me, if that is the case. If the case is people just want to see good action in 3D in a movie. Sure. Then the unsolved mystery for me is... Why do movies like Ninja Turtles and Transformers get a pass with people that go, it was awesome, it was excellent, it was great, when other movies also have that 3D action, but also well-written stories and characters that elevate the movie as a whole above those Transformers and Ninja Turtle movies? Because I, Why, think, I think they're talking about the thing that you go to see the movie for. If you go to see the movie for the action and they both have action, you go, cool, I got what I wanted. Okay. And then you might be tricked into also seeing a movie with a great plot. But I think that, like, I, let's just use that same example I was talking about. The Conjuring, much better movie than Paranormal Activity. But people went to see both of those movies yes. to get scared. Okay, agreed. And they like them both the same, you know, like they're both scary movies. Because they both got what they paid for. Right. It's like they went and they were like, ah! Ah! Okay. Oh my god! Okay. Okay, so even if I think objectively one movie is better because of the sum of its parts, 
if people are going for the one thing and they get it, it's still satisfying and therefore a great experience. Mm-hmm. That I don't agree with that, but that makes sense. I think we just solved the mystery. Mystery solved. Mystery solved, everybody. Thanks for coming. Maybe we'll do another one when we find another thing our brains don't understand. Yeah, and uh, we're going to try and, like, maybe <laughs> cover, like, uh, what, what's another one that we've been thinking about? Oh, we've been thinking about a lot. <laughs> There's quite a few. There's right. quite a few. Some of them are a bit more specific than others in regards to what we do. There's a couple painting ones. Uh, but, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Mystery solved. Go see Guardians of the Galaxy or Ninja Turtles this week. Yeah. Or both. See both, compare. Weigh in. Solve the mystery for yourself. Yeah, and if you like action, then just go for the action. You know, fuck everybody. Yeah. That's that's really what happens. Fuck everybody. Fuck everybody, right. Just have fun and do exactly what you want. At least, go, like, don't kill get, anybody. Go get whatever it is you need wherever you're going to end up getting it. <laughs> that sounds like getting a prostitute. Hey, man. <laughs> to me, that's what going to see Ninja Turtles is. Getting a prostitute? It, it's getting a pro- It's This is really low quality and it doesn't really mean anything, but I, I, I just got to have it. I just need some action. All right. Well... Guardians of the Galaxy would be the meaningful relationship. That's true. That's what I think. Ninja Turtles is the quick, sweaty Friday night that you're feeling alone, and you make that phone call, and Guardians of the Galaxy is, you know, I didn't really know you at first, but now that I spent some time with you, I really feel things. Yeah. I like that last one. All right, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good day. See you all.